the Holy comes, the Holy comes, hallelujah, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. There is no God like Jehovah, no God like Jehovah. Amen, amen. Greetings, my brethren. God bless you. Welcome to our teleconference another time. We are here to give God praise, give God glory for all that he has done. Hallelujah. The psalmist says, the writer says, Of all that the Lord has done, I will never cease to praise him. And we cannot cease to praise him because our God is. He's so good to us. He's so loving. He's so kind. He has done so much for us. The psalmist says, The Lord has done great things for us. We are, off. We are glad. And another time we're here to, greet, to glorify the God of our salvation. Praise the name of the Lord. We are finishing our topic on the Psalms this week. And we're going to look at um, Psalms 140. Psalm 140. And um, we're just going to look in the words of the psalmist. Um, our God is a great God. And um, it's, it's, the topic is, Deliver me, O Lord. Deliver me, O Lord. You know, sometimes we need to be delivered. And so we're going to look at a situation where we find ourselves that we need deliverance. And deliverance, true deliverance come only from the living God. Praise the name of the Lord. But before I do, let me have a shout. Let us have a short prayer. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Father, we bless your holy, blessed name. Your name is excellent. And we thank you for what you have done for us, what you are doing, and what you are about to do. We give you praise. We give you glory for your goodness and for your mercies and for your grace. Pray you will lead us. Pray you will guide us. Pray you will direct us. Pray will open our heart, hallelujah, to a better understanding of who you are. We bless you, we praise you, we glorify you, we magnify your name, and we give you thanks. Bless everyone that joined, and lead us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go into the Word of God, it's going from Psalm 140. Psalm said, but deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man, which imagine mischief in their hearts continually. Are they gathered together for war? They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Other poisons is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who have proposed to overthrow my goings. The proud have hid a snare for me. The, crowd, the cords they have spread as net for my, the, by the wayside. They have set gin for me. I said unto the Lord, Thou art my God. Hear my voice, my supplication, O Lord. O God, my Lord, the strength of my salvation. Thou hast covered me, thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. Grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Further not their wicked device, lest they exalt themselves. As for the head of those that compass me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Let burning coal fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into the pit, that they rise not up again. Let not the wicked speaker establish in the earth. Evil shall slay the violent man to overthrow him. Evil shall haunt the violent man to overthrow him. I know the Lord will remain the cause 
of the afflicted. The Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and the right of the poor. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. So, we are looking at the word of God and we are looking at the psalm, Psalms David, who know that whenever he's in trouble, there's one person, there's one person, or one man he can call upon, and he knew it was the Lord. There was none who he knew who was able to help him in any trouble. So realizing this, he said, deliver me, Lord, deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man, preserve me from the violent man. There are some people who their heart and mind is set to do evil. Evil become a way of life to many. Some people do not like peace. They do not want peace. They don't care for peace. They want war. They want trouble. So David found himself in a situation that he himself was a man of peace. And even though David fought many battles in his time and killed many, he was a man of peace and he did everything to defend himself and defend his people as he was the king of Israel. His right was to defend his people. So whatever the cost is, he was prepared to do so. But he found himself in many situations when, when he needed the Lord, when he needed help. And we all here realize that there are circumstances that come up upon us which is beyond our control. There are situations that we face that is beyond our control. And when we know that we are in this position, it is good when we know who to call to, who we can call upon for help. So David knew that he could call upon the Lord. He trusted the Lord because the Lord would always be there for him whenever he's in need. And so he said, deliver me, Lord. I need to be delivered. I am in a situation. I need to be delivered. And we sh should realize that whatever situation we find ourselves in, no matter what it is, what type of trouble, we must realize that the Lord is our deliverer. So David said, deliver me, Lord. Deliver me from perverse, mm, perverse me, perver preserve me from the violent man who imagine mischief in, his, in their heart and, continue, and continually they are gathered together for war. Some people imagine mischief and mischief only. Nothing else will make them happy but mischief. And, so, and we who are, have chosen the Lord for our Savior and our Redeemer, we are people of peace. The Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers because they shall be called the children of God. We are peacemakers, but not everyone has a mind to have peace. And so David encountered these, these nations that came up against him, came up against Israel. And they were a violent nation. If we look what's happening in the world today, in Israel and in, in, um, in Europe, um, Ukraine and in the Middle East, and we see that there's people who love violence, who minds is set on violence, nothing, peace, they, peace is not in their mind, peace is not in their heart. But David said, preserve me. We need to preserve, be preserved from the violent man who imagine mischief in their heart and continually they gather together for war. How can people, you wonder, how can, how can people actually have pleasure in war? We would ask ourselves, how can someone have pleasure in killing? How can one have pleasure in shedding blood? 
But we in this world, are, because we love the Lord, because we serve the Lord, because we have given our life to the Lord, we have peace in our heart. And we have no sense of war, hate, destruction, as some do. But David said, deliver me from such. Deliver me, Lord, from the evil man. And as we go, there's so much evil around us. Some of the evil we don't even know. We don't even, we, we, we don't, we can't even we specify. We can't even acknowledge. We can't even see. But we are surrounded by evil. And when we know the Lord, we don't need to be afraid. We don't need to be hanging our heads down. We can look to the Lord. Psalm says, I will lift my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth. Our help. We have no other help but the Lord. So David went on to say, they have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Other poison is under their lips. Dangerous people we are surrounded by. But we know the Lord. He is our deliverer. They have sharpened their tongue like a serpent. When a serpent is ready to prance, we, no one knows when it's going to prance, but it prance as its prey. But we know the Bible says, when the enemy comes like a flood, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God is our deliverer. The Spirit of God is there to deliver. The Spirit of God is there to shield us. The, sh the Spirit of God is there to protect us. And David knew. And so we should know always to call upon the Lord. He says, keep me, O Lord, keep me from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent men who purpose to overthrow my goings. There's many people who, if they knew what we stand for, they would not like, they do not like what we stand for. If we serve the Lord, if we follow the Lord, if we are children of the King, they do not like it. And their heart, their mind is set against us. But God is our refuge and He's our strength and He's a very present help in times of trouble and He's one we can depend on. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man whose purpose to overthrow me. If we know the story of David, David was made the king of Israel after Saul. And if we know some of the things that David went through in his life, it is amazing. It's amazing how he came through. Sometimes we ourselves, we have been through so many things in life, we don't know how we came through. But it's the Lord. David was pursued by his son. His son Absalom wanted to kill him to take the throne. And David had to run away from his son. The Bible tells me that David had to run barefooted upon the mountain to escape his son. Because his son was fixed to destroy him, his own father. But God delivered him. And he knew and realized that it was God who delivered him. He knew many times when he was in trouble, even with Saul. Saul wanted to kill him many times. Saul, being the king of Israel, wanted to kill David. Because God had anointed him above, him, above Saul. And so he, Saul wanted to kill him. But he knew God. And when we know God, we know that whatever circumstances, whatever enemy that come up against us, our God is able to deliver. He is the great deliverer. 
deliverer. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Hallelujah. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. We can't live without Jesus. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by the ever word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And Jesus is the word of God. So David is saying here, Psalm 140, The proud have hid a snare for me and cords that they may spread a net by the wayside. They have set gins for me. You know when someone wants to entrap you? You don't know where the trap is set? You don't know where, you know where the danger lies? But our Lord, God Almighty, He sees everything. He sees our danger. And He covers us, He protects us. David realized that he had a protector in the Lord. The Lord was his protector. And in verse 6, Psalm 140, verse 6, it says, I said unto the Lord, Thou art my God. Hear the voice of my supplication, O God. I said unto the Lord, Thou art my God. Hear the voice of my supplication. You, you know, this relationship that David had with God was a tremendous relationship. It was one built on firm trust and faith. Trust and faith. Meaning that he doesn't know what would befall him, but he knew if any danger comes his way, he knew he could call upon the Lord. Many times... David called upon the Lord. Many times he was in distress. Many times he was in danger. And many times, every time he trusted and called upon God, God was there to deliver. He said, I said unto the Lord, Thou art my God. Hear the voice of my supplication. Hear the voice of my plea. I am pleading to you to deliver me. We have a great deliverer. We have a mighty God. We have a God who is specialized in impossible things. Where there's no way, God makes a way. Whatever the door is that is shut, God opens. And whatever door God shut, it cannot be opened. Hallelujah. It cannot be opened. No man can open the door when God shut it. No one. And no man can shut the door that God can't open. So when we realize how great God is, we have to give Him praise, we have to give Him glory. We have to draw near to Him. Especially in these times that we're living in. We are living in perilous times. People don't realize the times that we are in. And many people is going about their business as everything is just normal things. Everything is normal. Things are not normal. We are coming to the edge of the cliff. This world is on a cliff edge. The way things are going now in the Middle East and in Ukraine, East Europe, we are on a cliff's edge. A lot of people don't realize that. We are so near to destruction. So near. And people don't realize. But the Lord is our helper. The Lord is our deliverer. When we know God and when we look to Him and when we trust Him and when we lean upon Him, we have no need to fear. 
We have no need to worry. We are perfect in Him. And perfect love casts out fear. So thank God for His love, His mercy, and His power of deliverance. And he went on to say in verse 9, As for the head of those that compass me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. You know, let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into the depth, into the pits, that they rise up no more. You wonder how David made this statement that he says, those seek mischief. Let the mischief against me, let that mischief cover them. Let burning coal fall upon them. Because there are some people who have committed themselves. You know, the Bible tells us about those whose their conscience is snared with, with an iron. You know, when if you have a piece of silky cloth and you put a hot iron on that silky cloth, it's all crumbling. It cannot be the same again. It can't be the same again. Have a piece of silky cloth, put a hot iron on it, and it burns no, it through. Not. It's finished. But it says that there are people who are like this. Their conscience is, dis is snared. Yeah. They have no conscience. So, these are the sort that David yeah. is talking about whose conscience is sneered like, like an iron has burnt it. So it says, um, let, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Let burning coal fall, on, fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire into the deep that they rise up no more. God has a plan for the righteous and God has a plan for the wicked. And we who have made Jesus our choice are on the right side because the wicked will be cast away eternally but the righteous shall live forever. The righteous shall reign with Christ in his eternal kingdom. What a hope. What a promise. Praise the Lord. So we do not have to worry about wicked people in their wickedness. What we don't need to look at them. We need to look away from them and look to Christ. Look to Jesus in his beauty, in his righteousness, in his power and in his glory. It says, let not evil speaker be established in the earth evil shall hunt the wicked evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him evil will haunt the violent man people who loves war the bible says they that live by the sword shall also perish by the sword if we live by the word of God, we will live forever. If we live in war, con discontent, brutality, lying deceitfulness, we will surely, anyone that does that, will surely perish. He went on to say, I know the Lord will remain will maintain the cause of the afflicted and the right of the poor surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name the upright shall dwell in thy presence upright righteous peacemakers afflicted ones 
because we are in this world and we are afflicted every day we mourn every day because of the enemy because our main adversary is the devil and every day he fight us he fight against us but the Lord but David says I know the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and the right of the poor sometimes we have a situation when we see ourselves maybe not achieving what we want not at the place we want maybe we would have liked to be in a better position in life we would like to be in a more comfortable position in life but that's not what is God's concern about God's concern about our soul and our salvation God is concerned about our peace not the comfort of course he promised to supply our every need but God is not concerned about the comfort of this life he is concerned about our our soul which is eternal which he loves he wants us to reign to live and to reign with him so we are in a situation where God keep us and provide our need no one who serve God should be deprived of anything because even the same Psalm, Psalmist David says I was young and I am now old yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread God will not allow us to beg bread he promised to provide God can provide all our needs. He's able to provide all our needs. The word says, God says in his word, if I were hungry, I would not tell thee. The world is mine and the fullness thereof. The cattle upon a thousand hills are mine. Everything we see, visible and invisible, belong to God. And David knew that much. That he could depend on the Lord for whatever his need may be. In Psalm 120, it's a short psalm, it says, In my distress, Psalm 120, In my distress I cried unto the Lord and he heard me. In my distress I cried unto the Lord and he heard me deliver my soul O Lord from lying lips and from the seedful tongue you know something a lying lips is an abomination to the Lord and we should avoid avoid by all means to avoid lying lips a lying lips is an abomination to the Lord deliver me Lord O oh Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. A deceitful tongue is, some, is someone who says something and then in his heart, he's saying it from his lips, but in his heart, it's a completely different story in his heart. That is deceit. Deceitful tongue. You are saying something, but it's not in your heart. You are doing a lip service. That is deceitful. Deliver me, O oh Lord, from a lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. What shall I give unto thee? Or what shall be done unto thee, thou false tongue? God, God abhor a false tongue. So an all possibility. We must speak the truth. We must abide in the truth. And so by doing so, we will have the favor of God. David was against people. The psalmist was against people who had lying lips and deceitful tongues. And if we, if we know God and we love God, we would hate. We would hate a lying lips and a deceitful tongue. That's the, that's the trouble with the world today. The trouble with the world today is lying lips and deceitful tongue. That's what's the problem with the world. 
People don't want to hear the truth and people don't want to tell the truth. Some people don't like the truth. Some people prefer lies. But as a child of God, we love the truth. The Bible says, Ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. There is power in truth. There's no power in lies. There's no power. And whatever lies, whatever lies that was ever told will all be uncovered. It shall be like darkness, it shall be like light covering the darkness, exposing. Every lie shall be exposed. Sharp tongue of the mighty with coal of juniper. Woe is me, for I sojourn in Mecca. I dwell in tents of Kadar. My soul hath long dwell with them that are at peace. My soul hath long dwell with them that are at peace. Because I love peaceful people. I love righteous people. I love humble people. I love the poor. I love all things. I love people who have the spirit of faith. I love, my soul hath long dwelt with him that are at peace. When I am for peace, but when I speak peace, they are for war. People love war. And that's why we see so much people, so much war in the world today. Because the world has turned away from the Lord. They have, the world has turned away from the Lord. And they have turned, they have been taken over by the evil one. Because we have to serve somebody. Every man has to serve somebody. We have to serve. If we don't serve the Lord, then we'll serve the devil. But we have to serve someone. And if we turn away from God, then the devil, we will we will in the hands of the devil, the evil one. And the evil one is, a, is only for war. It's war time now, brethren. War time. We're in a time of war, my brothers and sisters. War in the east, war in the west, war in the north, war in the south, war everywhere. It's a war time. But you know, if we think about God and how amazing God is, God keep fresh fish in a salty sea. We all know the water of the sea is salty, but yet if you take a fish out of the sea and you cook it, it's fresh. How does God keep a fresh fish in the salty sea? But so God keep us from the war from the rumors of war, from fear, from 